I'm from China, Hangzhou. Uh, actually, we'll host the next conference. If you just know Beijing and Shanghai, you don't know China. If you try to know China, to know Hangzhou. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hangzhou, that's the very beautiful city. Yeah. Next conference will be there. And uh, my university. Actually, things happening in China is dramatically changed people's lives. People at my age are very happy to see, to watch, to devote ourselves during the dramatic change. We used to be very poor, now developed so fast. But here I borrow the words from Charles Dickens. We say, what's the time for China? The best, the worst, the wisdom, the foolishness, the belief, the incredulity, the light, the darkness. So many things happen in China. Actually, 10 minutes is not enough for me. <laughs> OK, anyway, the, the basic uh, the other line would be the four parts, actually. Uh, I will try my best to, in 10 minutes. Actually, the background. We see China developed so fast. That's the dramatic change. So what's the main reason? What's the driving forces for this? We see the people. The people change in China. Uh, we see we're rising so quick. And uh, actually, that's the renaissance of China. Uh, that's the, the proportion of the GDP of China to this world. We are not at the time of the most. Yeah. But anyway, we are in the time of the nations. But anyway, in recent years, we are more and more tough to deal with so many problems. So we see that there is the greater walls over there. That's the greater walls here. Where's China? That's the, in the year 2007. But, uh, now we could see China might be, might be here, in my view. The in institutional qualities, not so good, no, even poor. But anyway, the GDP increasing so fast, the income for people is rising. So what's the main issues you'd like to see? The changes that happened in China surely related with the common people, especially for the, those farmers, you see, in the rural areas. So we see the changes of the whole structure of the economy. So we see that the agriculture, the proportion of the GDP, the laborers working in agriculture from the 70% up to around the 40%. So many people migrated to the main cities. So we see the industry, the industrialization is the main procedure for China's rising. However, we could see the, the gap, the gap between the people's life in the urban area and the, the rural area. So we could see the gap enlarged. The gap is enlarged. In the year 2009, China's Gini coefficients reached 0 0.49. That could be the highest in this world. So we could see the big gap, the imbalance, the inequality maybe are there in China. So our researchers, actually we look at the innovation systems for inclusive development. So thanks to the IDRC Canada and the Natural Science Foundation of China, we got the strong support of them. We conducted our uh, researches. Actually, that's in the year of 2008. 
after we launched our studies, we could see that the top leaders of China now frequently addressing the inclusive development. Yeah, that's very, very important. Uh, also, this project is uh, collaborated with my colleagues from India. So thanks to my colleagues in India also. Yeah, we got a lot of uh, guidance and uh, insights from them. Uh, our studies, mainly we pay attention to the rising of the uh, economic uh, developed very fast area. We could see that what's happened dramatically. So we see pay attention, special attention to the clusters and the specific regions. So our study con conducted to some different areas. We try to compare what's the different development patterns, what's the influence of the uh, inclusive development. Uh, typically, we from, I'm from the Zhejiang province. So we see in Zhejiang, in the last uh, three decades, from very poor province became the richest province in China. So what's the main reasons? What happened there? How about the inclusiveness? So we see we choose several clusters, industrial clusters, to address to conducting our uh, researches. And when we talk about the inclusiveness, there are several definitions. Not necessary for me to address this. But anyway, we could see China is entering the area we call the globalization. No country could be excluded from the global manufacturing network actually. So we see that's the global inclusiveness. So we see the from upstream to the downstream, what's the different impacts of the inclusiveness. And uh, here we could see that the IBM Research Academy, they conducted several researches to show this, the upstream and the, the, down, the upstream and the downstreams, we could see what's the contribution of those the value chain activities uh, help the people to be involved in the economic development. So we could see the services contributed a lot for the uh, employment, but the, actually in China, we pay attention to the manufacturing especially. So in our researches, we clearly to find that the inclusiveness concerning with two dimensions one is, we call it the value sharing inclusiveness. That's to indicate the degree of value capture from innovation by the local people, especially those small micro enterprises. And also we pay attention to the participation inclusiveness. So we conducted our studies to look at those issues. So we got our <coughs> framework that Mainly, we have this framework. We see the capability, the institution, the opportunity of participation, and the, the outcome. We see the value sharing. So with this four dimensions, not four dimensions, this, the, with this framework, we see three key issues. The barrier reduction, uh, institutional innovation, and the capability building are the key issues to improve the inclusiveness. So we see some cases, such as this. How to reduce, lower the barrier, and uh, help people to have their capability building. There's a one typical case is the farmer's mailbox. That's in the year of 2005. The provincial government launched this big project to help the farmers. So we could see that up to now, over 2 million people, over 2 million family, actually, uh, they are registered as the user uh, for the farmer mailbox. The whole sales value, the revenue, actually, OK, should be very quick. <laughs> <laughs> because China is big. Uh. <laughs> So we could see that 
Actually, the mailbox helped a lot of people lower the barrier of enter the mainstream. And also, not just the, the lower the entry barrier, but also help people to have their capability building. They provide the technical consult, even the training for those common people. So it's a very, very typical case. So that's the mailbox you see in my province. And another case is that we conducted our studies to compare different development paths. Typically, we choose the Suzhou and the Hangzhou. That's the two paradise cities in China. But uh, we follow different uh, development trajectories. We could say in Suzhou, mainly the economy is the FDI. In Wenzhou, mostly there's entrepreneurs, grassroots. So we could see the gap, the income and the GDP per capita, the gap. In Suzhou, it's very big, but in Wenzhou, it's small, not so big. So we see that why the Wenzhou could be more inclusive. So we see the entrepreneurship, maybe they play so important roles. So we see the institutional, the government policy, uh, government policy crafting should be related with those things. We see the private companies and the the foreign director investment could, could be affected in different ways. So we see the participants, the sharing, sustainability, the local inclusiveness are quite different. Yeah. Okay, the last one. <laughs> so we can see the implication is that the improving the uh, inclusiveness is surely important. So this studies improve our perspectives to leverage the key factors. And also it's possible to have the right ways to change the existing context to improve the inclusiveness. And also we may, well, we may see that it may be much more significant to address the participation rather than just the, the sharing. Yeah. So in this way we see the government could play a very important role, and uh, even important role, even more important role, played by those grassroots entrepreneurs. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Welcome to Hangzhou. <laughs> <laughs>